this is biotechnica and you're listening to india's first life science podcast the voice of biotechnica there is a saying that all good fruits will turn bad which stands apt for nanotechnology though nanoparticles have wide usage their small size and unique physical chemical properties impose potential risk to human health and the environment during its manufacture use and disposal hello everyone myself dr violet and today i am going to enlighten you about the perils of nanoscience beware nanoparticles can be a double edged sword before we go into details of it first let us understand what is nanotechnology nanotechnology is derived from greek word nanos meaning dwarf renowned physicist richard p feynman was the first to talk about nanoscience in his speech to the american physical society the term nanotechnology was next introduced by norio taniguchi in 1974 nanoscience comprises the study of structures and materials on the scale of nanometers nanoscience gave birth to an era of nanotechnology which uses nanoparticles imagine you take a big large rock and determine its mass and surface area to volume ratio now you take a hammer and start smashing the rock what happens the accumulated mass of the resulting smaller pieces still remains the same but the surface area to volume ratio increases now smash all of those small pieces into tiny pieces they continue to have the same combined mass but the surface area increases tremendously that's what nanoparticles are they are less than 100 nanometers some may ask if nanoparticles exist in nature well they do exist in dust forest fires volcanoes metals and many more but the term nanotechnology generally involves engineered materials with at least one dimension which is about 100 nanometer or less now let's understand what happens at the nano scale at the nano scale the classic laws of physics get defied resulting in material taking on different optical electrical or magnetic properties than it would have in a bulkier form this happens so because material at the nano scale have a relatively larger surface area vis-a-vis its volume when compared to the same material in bulk form it is because nanoparticles have these altered properties that makes them useful at the nano scale copper which is normally opaque becomes transparent and gold usually solid becomes a liquid they can either show greater capacity to conduct or resist electricity excellent color purity increased heat storage or transference ability better absorbability or enhance antibiotic properties nano silver is used in bandages socks and food packaging due to its antibacterial properties zinc oxide nanoparticles are widely used in sunscreen and cosmetics nano titanium dioxide is used in medicine as nutritional supplements food additives skin creams toothpaste and in foods like coconut and yogurt as a whitener today there are already more than 1800 products in the market that incorporate nanoparticles house paint clothes curling irons refrigerators inks iphones laptop computers towels sunglasses toothbrushes pacifiers laundry detergent toys rackets food containers and the list goes on but do we all have enough knowledge about this new technology 
to understand what are the potential unintended impacts of nanoparticles on human health and the environment as nanoparticles become more widespread the public and those who work with them are getting increasingly exposed to them since 2001 the federal government has invested around dollar 20 billion in nanotechnology research through the national nanotechnology initiative but only dollar 750 million for studying the safety and environmental and health impacts of nanotechnology the highest risk of nanoparticles is to the workers in nanotechnology research and manufacturing processes the concern is that nanoparticles are so small that they can easily penetrate into appendageal structures like hair follicles fool our first line of defense by penetrating the stratum corneum theoretically entering the body dr dralos founder of dermatology consulting services us cites the example of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide these are minerals from rocks which are grounded to a small particle size for topical sunscreens sunscreens use nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium oxide which are small enough so applying sunscreen does not make the skin look white but these nanoparticles can penetrate the skin or even enter the water bodies when it gets washed from the body thus becoming a threat to aquatic life nanoparticles have been known to interact with the cells tissues and organs of the biological systems as they have a greater potential to move across the whole organism compared to bulk materials due to their size nanoparticles can be inhaled ingested and absorbed through the skin and eyes once inside the body nanoparticles get accumulated in their target organs which can lead to cytotoxicity or genotoxicity nanoparticles can also trigger the release of chemical molecules which further generates an immunological response researchers have provided enough proof that when rats inhale manganese oxide nanoparticles which is inhaled daily by factory welders the nanoparticles gets deposited in their brain and lungs further triggering signs of inflammation and cellular stress when titanium dioxide nanoparticles were tested on hairless mice as it is commonly used to block sun rays without the white pastiness nanoparticles induce skin aging when titanium dioxide nanoparticles were mixed into the drinking water of mice for 2 years scientists observed that the mice had significant dna and chromosomal damage various studies have been conducted and on the basis of the study varied conclusions have been drawn which states that nanoparticles in sunscreen cause dna damage in skin cell nanotubes are toxic on prolonged use gold nanoparticles pass along the placenta from mother to fetus they have shown to be toxic to macrophages epithelial cells fibroblast and mitochondria carbon nanotubes which have high thermal and electrical conductivity stiffness strength and toughness when introduced into the stomachs of mice behave like asbestos leading to inflammation and lesions nanoparticles can cross the blood brain barrier enter the blood or the central nervous system with immense potential to directly affect cardiac and cerebral functions the nanoparticles also have the ability to redistribute in the biological system from the site of deposition and cause harmful effects iron oxide nanoparticles have been used in medicines for drug delivery and in diagnostic fields iron oxide nanoparticles remain in cell organelles like endosomes lysosomes then get released into cytoplasm after decomposing and thus increases the cellular iron pool magnetic iron oxide nanoparticles 
have been observed to accumulate in the liver, spleen, lungs and brain after inhalation, showing its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. Studies showed that these nanoparticles exert their toxic effect in the form of cell lysis, inflammation and disrupting the blood coagulation system. Silica nanoparticles have profound usage in drug delivery systems. It acts as an easily functionalized drug carrier. Though previously nanosilica was thought as a highly biocompatible material in drug delivery systems, but according to recent reports, nanoparticles of silica cause the generation of reactive oxygen species and subsequently leading to oxidative stress. Due to the continuous use of nanoparticles, it is inevitable that engineered nanoparticles will gradually be released into the environment through intentional releases as well as unintentional releases such as atmospheric emissions and solid or liquid waste from production units. In addition, nanoparticles in paints, fabrics and personal and healthcare products including sunscreens and cosmetics enter the environment proportional to the use as they get washed off. The emitted nanoparticles will ultimately deposit on land and water surface. Nanoparticles which reach the land have the potential to contaminate soil and migrate further into surface and ground waters. Particles in solid waste, wastewater effluents, direct discharges or accidental spillages can be transported to aquatic systems by wind or rainwater runoff. The biggest release of nanoparticles in the environment can come from spillages occurring during the transportation of manufactured nanoparticles from production facilities to other manufacturing sites. Intentional releases for environmental applications and releases associated with continuous erosion from general use. Nanosilver is being used as an antibiotic, which can pave its way from landfills, industrial effluents, and wastewater treatment plants, and finally into ecosystems where it could be toxic to aquatic and terrestrial life forms. Over five years, the researchers exposed plants and microbes to nanosilver and concluded that even when given a low dose of nanosilver, the plants and microbes produced about a third less biomass, which indicates the amount of stress it goes through. Research has demonstrated that the nanoparticles of titanium dioxide, aluminium oxide and zinc oxide got deposited in the gut of the Daphnias when they were kept in suspensions of nanoparticles for 48 hours. Therefore, in this process, titanium dioxide nanoparticles gets rapidly accumulated in 12 hours, whereas their excretion gets slowed and a significant part of these nanoparticles still remained in the Daphnia body 72 hours late. These experiments with aquatic organisms have further shed light on the fact that the presence of nanoparticles in aquatic medium can amount to decreased fertility, certain physiological changes, abnormalities in behavior and an increased mortality rate. Fullerene C60 and C70 have shown to cause embryotoxicity and genotoxicity at the early embryogenesis of zebrafish as there is a significant increase in malformations in embryos and their death at high concentrations of fullerenes. Moreover, it was found that the unmodified fullerenes were more toxic than the hydroxylated variants. So, the question is what can be done so as to harness the benefits of nanoparticles without being affected by it? Well, the concentration of nanoparticles used should be regulated. Nanoparticles usage in products 
are currently covered under various acts under the US Environmental Protection Agency, the Food and Drug Administration and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration which have started to look specifically at the risk posed by nanotechnology. There is a need of the hour to think about nanoparticles that are dangerous and try to figure out how to use them safely or find alternatives. But it is also important that we don't group all nanoparticles into one category of being harmful so that the safe ones can't be used. We need to distinguish between them. The Environmental Protection Agency has currently stated to assess the health and safety impacts of certain nanoparticles like titanium dioxide, nano silver, iron, carbon nanotubes, cerium oxide and micronized copper. FDA has issued several guidance documents discussing the use of nanotechnology or nanoparticles in FDA regulated products. In April 2012, the FDA had advised that companies using nanoparticles in food additives or packaging were to consult with the FDA and demonstrate that their products are safe before selling them. Cosmetics companies using nanoparticles were urged to do additional safety testing. Though no final guidance has been issued as of yet. Now, biotechnicians, what is your call on it? Don't you feel that proper regulation should be laid down for using nanoparticles in optimum concentrations without affecting the human health and environment? Do share your views on nanotechnology. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for more questions and discussions on the platform of Voice of Biotechnical. Thank you. Should you have any questions, please comment below. Do not forget to subscribe to Biotechnical's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with latest in BT sector.